This was the first time I shoot with a 100 megapixel medium format camera. Hi everyone, how is it going? Did you ever use a 100 megapixel medium format camera? In this video I want to talk about uh, a crazy camera I tested a few days ago, the awesome uh, Fujifilm GFX100. I'm really excited to share with you some of my thoughts after a short trip I had in Slovenia. Last April I had a chance to capture some nice images in the Faroe Islands with the GFX 50R. A really nice camera with an excellent image quality, but for some reason it didn't convince me at all, or at least not as much as the GFX100. If you have seen my work before, you know that I'm still using the X-T2 and the Little Brother and most recent the X-T30. With 100 megapixels, the jump from my regular APS-C sensor cameras is huge and is something that can easily blow your mind. Without any doubt, this is the most powerful camera I ever held in my hand. And it's extremely, extremely expensive. Okay, the price may seem initially high, but compared to other medium formats, Fuji has done an outstanding job and at a competitive price point. It's a completely different camera from the previous 50R or 50S. And uh, as the X series cameras, it's very easy to understand and so quick to use. I am a landscape photographer, so this is not an in-depth technical review to cover all the capabilities of this wonderful camera. My intent is basically to focus on how this camera works uh, and the uh, features that stuck me the most positively during the test uh, on the field. So, first of all, let's see the main features of the GFX100. The main features are a relatively compact body with a weather resistant structure, 100 megapixel large format CMOS back illuminated sensor, actually it's a 102 megapixel, uh, X processor 4, the IBS in body image stabilization, the capability to record 4K videos at 30 pm with a 10 bit color depth and phase detection pixels uh, across uh, the entire sensor. For those used to the chunky design of a full-size DSLR like uh, the Nikon D5 or Canon 1DX, the GFX100 will feel right at home. In fact, it's quite large and bulky but feels quite lightweight because of its magnesium alloy construction. Approximately 1400 grams, including two batteries, memory card and DVF. One thing to note is the real LCD screen, which is a 3.2 inches and tilts, which is very useful. The viewfinder itself is a crisp 5.76 million dot display and can be interchanged with a EVF TL1 version, which I didn't have for this test. The camera is waterproof and full sealed, so obviously it means for outdoor action like uh, landscape photography in uh, difficult weather conditions, uh, in cold, hot, dry or wet environments. The working temperature is from minus 10 to 40 degrees Celsius. Moving on to the top plate, we have the drive button on the left side. It's surrounded by a locking control dial. Uh, you need to hold down the button next to it to turn it which changes the capture mode between stills, multi-shot bracketing and movies. The right of the top plate is dominated by an OLED display. It's a backlit for better visibility in dim light and a button to its left to activate the light. You can cycle through different display settings using the small market button to its right. It toggles the shooting mode by default via the standard P, A, S and the M options. You will need to set your own lens aperture control ring to its A position to access the shutter priority in the camera though. This play option includes an information screen that shows exposure data, the, the shooting mode, the white balance, file format and the film emulation mode along with the number of shots left on your memory card and battery life. 
Then the previous entries in the GFX family, the 50S and 50R use uh, physical dials. But with the GFX 100, all the controls are totally digital. No more mechanical dials. Anyway, there are a lot of function buttons uh, all over the back of the camera, which are really nice and useful. Most of these are completely configurable, so you can customize the functions from the menu and assign them to the different function buttons. The GFX 100 features a single Q button, a quick access button which opens a fully customizable menu with the most used commands. The sensor is a BSI CMOS design with a Bayer color filter array. And sadly, Fujifilm doesn't use its X-Trans array in the GFX series. The sensor aspect ratio is a 4x3, something I love so much. Moreover, it works especially better than the 3x2 ratio when you're composing portrait orientation. Lovely. The Fujifilm GFX sensor is way larger than the APS-C and the difference is quite evident. The 35mm full frame represented here in red is clearly smaller than the GFX sensor but maybe not as much as you thought. Actually, the GFX sensor is a sort of super full frame, bigger than a 35 full frame but smaller than the Monster Phase 1 IQ sensor which measures 53.7 by 40.4 mm and offer up to 150 megapixel resolution. Moving to the viewfinder and LCD, the GFX100 includes a removable viewfinder and an articulating LCD in its design. The EVF is one of the best around. It's big with a 0.86 magnification rating and exceedingly crisp thanks to its 5.76 million dot resolution. It's also removable, which can make the big camera a bit easier to squeeze into a camera bag or to give you a better view of the tilting rear display from above. The rear display is a super sharp, bright, vivid touchscreen display, extremely responsive. You won't experience any kind of stickness or lag when you are pinching, zooming or panning your photos. It literally feels like working with a, a high-end smartphone, uh, which is a good familiar thing. There is no need to navigate commands with a joystick, very useful are the screen gestures, completely configurable based on the, your taste or your necessities, pretty much the same as any of the newer camera like the X-T3 or the X-T30. This feature is one of the reasons why the GFX100 doesn't have as many dials and buttons as you'd expect on a high-end camera. The screen is mounted on a dual-axis hinge. It tilts to face up or down and can also swing to face toward the right. I found it useful for both handheld and tripod use, especially when working at a low angle. There is a second rear display, a narrow monochrome OLED positioned below the LCD. It shows the set mode, shutter speed, ISO, EV value, film simulation setting and white balance by default. Uh, you can dive into the menu and set it to show other information with discrete displayed options for stills and video if you like. Instead of designing a new battery, Fujifilm decided to use the same MPT-125 battery as the GFX 50R and 50S. It's powered by two of them which load in a removable tray. In camera charging supported via USB-C and there is a single external charger included in the box if you want to charge the battery outside of the body. The GFX100 is rated for 800 shots per charge, but in my experience, uh, after some time in the field with the camera, I feel that the estimate uh, is on the low side, especially if you mix uh, uh, some video recording. Spare batteries uh, are an absolute must uh, for an all-day use. In addition to the USB-C, the GFX100 includes uh, a micro HDMI port for use with an external recorder, there are 3.5mm headphone and microphone jacks for audio, a 2.5mm remote connector, a hot shoes, 
on both the body and the EVF and a legacy PC Sync flash uh, connector. Wireless communication is included as well, uh, GFX100, sports, Bluetooth uh, and uh, Wi-Fi. It pairs with the Fujifilm Cam remote app. Not the best app in the world, to be totally honest. Uh, so you can transfer photos to your phone or tablet for editing or use uh, your handheld device as a remote control. Something which I don't normally do, I much prefer the classic uh, cable release. There are two memory card slots, uh, it's a UHS architecture. Usually I set up the camera to save the same row shots on both uh, SD cards, using the second one as a backup. About the ergonomic, I didn't notice any specific problem with the layout, but something that bothered me is the integrated vertical grip. There is no rubberized grip when you're using it in the portrait mode, so it isn't as comfortable to hold and may slip out of your hands if your hands are sweaty. The addition is welcome, though not as comfortable as some chunky add-on batteries grip I've used in the past. But apart from that, the battery grip has a secondary shutter button, so you can easily use the camera in portrait mode. There is access to a second joystick to navigate through your focus points and your quick menu, so you can change your white balance or any other setting. One reason for such a bulky body is the addition of the in-body image stabilizer, the IBIS, which is a new feature for the medium format world. The stabilization system promises 5.5 stops of stabilization across five axes, a definite plus point for handheld user and lenses without stabilization. You can get crisp results when working handheld, even if you need a slightly longer shutter speed than you would use without the feature. Some lenses include stabilization, which works in conjunction with the sensor for crisp results. The GFX100 is a much more capable video camera than any medium format model has the right to be. The stabilization plays a part, it smooths out jitters from handheld footage very effectively, but there is more to it than just that. The Fujifilm GFX100 can shoot uncropped 4K footage, which is one of the largest out there. Lots of pro features are included, uh, such as the 4K 30p at 10-bit uh, 420 internally and 10-bit 422 when linked to an external recorder, with a maximum recording time of one hour. Really impressive. You also have the ability to record in F-Log mode to have more freedom on the color grading stage. Great, image quality and a few examples. The images out of the GFX100 are absolutely superb, no questions. The detail out of the 102 megapixel sensor is full of color, depth and detail, and also the dynamic range of the camera is amazing and I was able to recover blown out highlights and shadows without losing any detail. The GFX100 RAF file is also fully supported by Capture One Pro 12, Point one. That's actually the version I'm using right now. And for some reason appeared more contrasty than the ref uh, from 50R. The detailed definition of the capture image viewed at 400% on Capture One Pro is very, very impressive. Uh, now I want to show you some right of the camera shots which I took uh, with the GFX100 just to see the amount of uh, details the sensor can capture and the high ISO performances and the dynamic range. I'm not really a pixel peeper but it's very easy to see the difference in terms of uh, resolution. Again, I will use Capture One that uh, at this moment has the best RAF conversion algorithm by far. Let's start with the first shot. Uh, this is a very common environment for me being a landscape photographer. So several types of textures, um, we have foliage, uh, rocks and so on. And in this shot, the amount of detail is huge. Look at the color nuances that the camera can reproduce. Absolutely brilliant. Tons of small details with a gorgeous micro contrast here on the rocks on the background. 
the grass. Um, usually for my professional works, 24, 26 uh, megapixels are more than enough to print a tiny size uh, that I need. But to be ho totally honest, zooming at 100%, you can easily see the enormous potential uh, of the 100 megapixel sensor. Look at that. That's insane. Okay, a couple more uh, where we can have a look at the image quality of this camera and how good it can reproduce any small detail. This one is uh, another one from the Lake Blade. Here, zooming at 100%. Here you can see, you can count any single branch of the trees, uh, the, the colors, the, the tonalities is reproduced perfectly. And here, the church, the detail on the church is absolutely amazing. Yeah, 200%, you can see any small, small detail. Same thing here, let's see, on the, on the buildings, on the background. Here we are at 400%. Let me reduce uh, at zero the luminance noise reduction. We can reduce the amount of sharpening just to see exactly straight off of the camera without any adjustment. Actually, I already applied a um, film simulation profile with the Provia, maybe just a, an adjustment on the black uh, white points, uh, nothing else. This is the, the shots right out of the camera, we, and here with uh, very few adjustments. Another one, maybe this one, here we can see all the details on the windows can you see that's insane guys yeah i'm really really impressed uh, on the on the quality of the of the image okay done uh, now uh, let's have a look at another image to get uh, uh, some idea of what the dynamic range uh, of the sensor this one works fine. On this image, the difference between the highlights and shadows is quite critical and looking at the histogram, there are some extreme highlights. Turn on the exposure warning function. Uh, we have extreme deep shadows, which are really close here on the bottom left. Uh, let's see how much detail we can pull out from this area using the HDR panel in Capture One. I want to be more aggressive just to show you the potential of the, of the sensor. And as you can see here, even on the darkest part of the trees, we got back all the details, all the details, maintaining a, a great colors, uh, great contrast on the, on the foliage. And then uh, we can move the, the slider of the highlights to rebalance the highlights. We can pull down a little bit the exposure, increase the contrast. Okay. Actually, we we can adjust locally this part instead of make um, an adjustment on the entire images. And look at that. Here I'm zooming at 100%, 200% and 400%. The resolution is absolutely, absolutely insane. You can recognize any face and details <laughs> that's crazy another shot uh, for a highlights recovering 
This is for sure uh, an overexposed um, capture, so um, turn on exposure warning and we can see the red area is the area where the highlights are clipping. So I want to start rebalancing the, the entire brightness of the image, moving the exposure toward the negative side. So uh, here I already have all the, the detail that I need. If I want to go further, I can move towards the right, the highlights to recover more details. And that's it. As you can see now, I have a perfectly exposed shot with a nice contrast. I can go further. Let's check with the exposure warning. So now I don't have any clipping. The before, after, before, after, zooming at 100%, here you can see there are all the small details, the smoothness uh, on the, of the tones. That's perfect. And obviously, that sharp. Great. Um, the high ISO performances are extremely good, uh, even though for a medium format camera, I would have expected something more. I have to be totally honest. You can push the ISO 3200 with a little bit of grain, but without other compromise. Noise starts to detract at ISO 6400. And actually one of the most unexpected benefits I've noticed is how accurate the color reproduction is. Uh, this is uh, the first shot, uh, luminance to zero and sharpening to zero, so we can evaluate the right amount of noise on the image. I want uh, to rebalance the, the global exposure, pull out some details on the shadows, and then we can zoom at 100%. Here we can see all the edges are black sharp, plenty of details, and here obviously we have more noise on the darkest parts of the image and but the color are really good even though we are we are capturing the the image with a, a high a high iso and here on the distance we have uh, other buildings so that we can evaluate the right amounts of the uh, detail and the edges are still really, really good. Applying a little bit of luminance reduction, we have a final product that's perfectly usable. Uh, another one, this is another shots I captured in this case uh, with uh, 1600 ISO at 130 uh, seconds uh, as a shutter speed f4 again luminance to zero sharpening to zero um, global exposure okay and as you can see the color are really nice and uh, beautiful colors and uh, we have uh, lots of details, zooming at 100%, 200%. Great details. Here we can pull out a little bit of shadow details. We can increase a little bit of contrast, increase a little bit of saturation. We can move the black point to make um, a faded look, okay, it's up to you. And that's pretty much uh, the final result. No more, uh, just a little bit of noise reduction at 100%. You can see before a noise reduction and after, before and after. 
Actually, this is the default setting for the noise reduction that uh, Capture One applied uh, to the these images, and that's perfectly fine. A little bit of uh, pre sharpening, okay, just to make the edges pop out a little bit, and done. A little bit of saturation. Great, before and after, before and after. As you can see, the GFX 100 makes an extremely nice job in low light. Beautiful color rendition and the noise is really nice and the image is very sharp all around. So the GFX 100 is a super impressive in both photo and video mode. It won't be for everyone because it's quite expensive uh, at 11,000 euros. You can go with a cheaper alternative in the Fujifilm 50R or 50S with the 50 megapixel sensor. Uh, like all medium format cameras, it's not a complete all-rounder, which means it's not the greatest in the low light or a handheld for a long time. But in my perspective, what does matter is the image quality. And here Fujifilm has nailed it. Also, comparing its specs with uh, its medium format competitors, you will find out it costs three to five times less. Uh, while delivering in superior specs like uh, 5-axis IBIS, uh, exceptional 4K video capabilities, top-notch OLED, EVF, uh, articulate touch screen, and so on. Again, I'm not saying that GFX 100 camera is for everyone, but for those photographers, in this case landscape photographers who are looking for the ultimate camera with an uncompromising image quality, GFX 100 is very, very hard to beat. So that's it for this review. I hope it's been useful and I hope it's been interesting. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and if you got any comments or any questions, please drop me a comment below. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Ciao!